I, um, I listened to Sami, and I think the only point he made mm -hmm. in the interest of his party is to suggest that the results uh, give them some opening to think that uh, maybe we are unpopular in our, um, our stronghold, and so therefore they can leverage that. But mm -hmm. the rest of the things he said uh, were just uh, utter exaggeration and uh, uh, things that he said mostly because uh, either they themselves have set up those propaganda instruments to bring those information out so he can communicate them. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the point I made about by-election being characteristically low in turnout, that's a fact. If you pick one by-election to illustrate that, you might be making a mistake. But by-elections, turnout is generally low, and so that's a given. And in fact, even turnout is not a function of the party's doing. Right, the, no political party can influence turnout. It's just uh, people's decision to vote or not to vote. Even in national elections, where publicity and promotion of the election is widespread and there's a fever that catches the entire nation for people to come out and vote, even that turnout sometimes is not 100%. Uh, the highest you probably get is about 80 uh, in that region, and so election and where people make decision to go and vote or not to vote is, is entirely their decision to make. And so notwithstanding the effort that uh, is put in by the EC, by the political party to create a certain fever in the constituency for people to go out and vote, the decision is theirs and theirs only to go out and vote. Now the question about uh, the vote share out of the turnout, I think that that's a, a relevant conversation to have. And one thing that I will assure Sami, uh, in that election, if he's looking at the 55.8% to be uh, the MPP's vote share in that election, he may be misled. Because Ediomi campaigned as an MPP. That's what he did. He campaigned as an MPP. There were places, communities that I went to, you know, that we hear. He goes to a community and tells the people. They do, they, he did house to house. He's talking about doesn't have infrastructure. He goes house to house and tells the people that if they vote for him, ultimately it will, it will add to the MPP vote. Okay, so you, you should vote for Adiomi and it will be counted as MPP vote. That's what he went about telling people. So he campaigned exclusively as an MPP, leveraging his MPP record to campaign. So you can quite simply add the 43.3 he got to the MPP's 55.8%. All that vote would have gone to MPP if Adiobi was not in that election. Okay? So don't be misled in thinking that 55.8% is all we got. Our vote went to him. Now, one thing also is that we had difficulties in the constituency to do with internal issues. That has been admitted. And I think that the national chairman went on, on uh, a bit on that tangent to indicate that we would, would try everything we can to bring Adiomi back to the party. He is a consummate MPP person. He's run that constituency on three, uh, you know, uh, on three occasions as MP, 12 years as an MP. So that person has name recognition, he has identity as an MPP, and he campaigned as an MPP. So that outcome... 55.8 uh, is not what MPP got. All our vote was split, and he got some of it. And so that's the key point that I want to make. You see, the, the issue with the president's comment, and I think Sami made reference to that, that, oh, it's only MPP, MP who can uh, lobby me to uh, build roads or do whatever. It is directly linked to the campaign Adiobi was doing in the constituency, that he only he constructs roads, that he can construct roads, and that he didn't give credit to the, uh, to the fact that he was able to do those things because of the platform given to him as a member of parliament and a deputy minister for roads and highways. He was claiming those things as his personal effort. So it was to straighten the record. And by the way, how, how is it wrong if he's saying that uh, if, 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 if an MPP MP speaks to me about A, B, C, D, that can be done. It is not discriminatory in any shape or form, but it is to address 
the misinformation that Diome and his campaign people were carrying across in the constituency. So the president was right, well within his right to have said those yeah, things. And I think it is only an MPP MP hmm. who can come to him and lobby him. Yeah, in context, in context to say what Adiobi is about in the constituency, saying that he facilitated the, the construction of any road in the constituency. Because for me, for me, sitting from the outside, if I listen to that rhetoric of the president... I, I agree. That, they, that's and why I, I have... I, that's I, how I, I, I just it oppose it against a coffee. Yeah. When the chiefs and elders called on him. Yeah. And his comments about the fact that their refusal to retain the MPP MP is what has made him forget about them in terms of their development. If I take that one and I take what he said at Ejisu, it clearly is telling me about the thinking of a man. No. Well, you, you, it, it can it's not just the one isolated case. Yes, yes. I, I don't I, even want to add the flood, the, the spillage one. Yeah. So, but so, it tells you, when you look at them, it tells mm -hmm. you that this is, it's not a one off where you can say that I can understand your issue of context and all right. that. But if, if you look at other utterances in that space, mm. it, 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 it's giving you a pattern. Yeah, well, so you, you can conclude that way, but that is not. Uh, what I mean is that he, he was speaking to an issue mm. to electorates who, if they don't get the fact, could be misled by his misinformation, right. and therefore he needed to straighten that fact. So I think that on, on balance, uh, what the outcome of a JUSO is, we know clearly what we have to do. Uh, the, the problem is internal. Uh, the national chairman is pointed to it. We'll deal with it. And these are interpersonal grudges that are, you know, morphing to become a party issue. But those will be dealt with. There's already a uh, committee, regional committees across the 16 regions that are facilitating reconciliations uh, across all the constituencies. But additional effort uh, will be made to ensure that a uh, the, the local issue to do with internal elections, which has festered and become uh, an, uh, you know, a problem that we had to deal with in this election, will be addressed. These are personal issues, and I think that the, the, the region would, would lead on, on resolving some of those issues. Once those, things, those issues are resolved, see, there, I tell you that the new patriotic party will win this election. Mm -hmm. The NDC, Sami, is talking about uh, some 24-hour economy that we have already uh, informed guardians that is, is a fallacy. Mm -hmm. It's not anything that is going to happen. But what will happen and what Ghana should look forward to, really, for the basis for voting for Dr. Alaji Babud Baulia mm -hmm. for the presidency of this country on December 7th is his innovative idea, and I think that, Senior, you should agree with this, the innovative idea of backing our CD with our gold. That is what the, the Saudis have done. That's what they have done rather expertly. And I think that if we did that in Ghana, which is one of the principal oh, ideas that uh, Dr. Baumia is going to bring, <laughs> we will be able to stabilize our city. So you know that the, 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 the short Saudis, Did the Saudis start that this year? Huh? Did they start that this year? Well, but Dr. Baumia, with that foresight, okay. is going to start it from so for, a place for, for and then we'll carry for on. For seven and a half years, he didn't have that idea. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think that you know that, Celia. Yes. You, you know the, the, the vision that we carried. Yes. When we came into government, the pursuit was to stabilize the economy that was done. The idea was to diversify economy, focus on production that was done. Huh? Now, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You, you, you can say that we haven't entirely succeeded in that production orientation, but that is being done, and it is historic okay. that in a, in a seven-year term or in an eight-year term of any government, mm -hmm. we have achieved that measure of uh, ensuring that industries or factories were, were created to advance the goal of production. That has been done. In the short period of this uh, gold for oil uh, enterprise and the Bank of Ghana gold purchase program, mm -hmm. we've been able to so support the payment of this country to the tune of 2.79 billion 
within that space of time. Before that the, what? The, the, for the external payment of the country. So we kind of generated dollars in that volume with the, our gold exchange. So you see I'm that. Confused. Well, so the gold, the gold for oil. No, I'm not asking you to explain. Ah, okay. Yeah. The Gold for Oil Initiative mm. has brought in in excess of 2.79 billion. And how dollars. has that impacted on fuel prices? Well, we're saying and that. How has it impacted on the stability? Well, but of the obviously it has. You know where the fuel prices were before the Gold for Oil? It has dropped. A lot needs to be done. A lot needs to be done. But I'm just using that to indicate for you a full-on implementation of that policy would yield much more benefit. Right. Imagine just that short window and what we've been able to realize. If you vote for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and he implement that policy, uh, saying that we're backing our, our CD with our gold, mm. buying gold in CDs and uh, obtaining dollars for it, it would help incredibly to stabilize our city mm -hmm. and uh, strengthen our external position. I think that that's why uh, we should, uh, in this election, I'm sure, I'm sure vote this is, for Dr. This is, Mahmoud Bama. This is contained in his lecture on how to stabilize the city, the one he gave us, and asked us to download. Those two <laughs> examples are in there, right? The, the uh, February 7th ele right. uh, election okay, is one, right. is one <laughs> of his <laughs> visions <laughs> that he's going to implement. And I think that okay, that is one thing Ghana right. has not seen. And he will implement that for the benefit of our country Efu, and for our city. Efu Americana. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs>